derive link to entities domain service, which is parameterized by my, my uh, entity framework model. So if I go to definition of this, this is my standard entity framework object context. Now, what do we have in this domain service class? We very simply have CRUD methods. So uh, for categories, we have get categories. For products, we have not only get products, but also insert, update, delete, simply because that's what we asked for when we created it. And finally, we have get suppliers. OK? So now, I'll go and generate completely uh, from scratch a simple ASP.NET file that uses this. Just give the default name. So later on, I'll, I'll show how to use uh, dynamic data against this, but I really want to make a point that this new domain data source is not at all tied to dynamic data. It works with dynamic data, but it, it works also uh, very well by itself. So if, if some of you, you know, are interested in data source controls, but not so much in the dynamic data aspect, this very much applies. So let's go and create a, a simple page. I'll just start with the grid view. And let's add this new data source, domain data source. Okay, so I need to do a few more things, obviously. I need to tie them together. I do this by saying data source ID equal domain DS. How many of you have done a similar thing with data sources before hooking up a, a data control and, and a data source? A very, very basic stuff. And um, I'll also, say again, oh yes, thank you. Is that why it's on the line and green? <laughs> so um, I'll tell it to auto-generate columns. And now let's see what we need to do. So we have this domain data source. We haven't told it what to work with. Right now it has no idea. So there's two key pieces of information that I need to tell it. The first one is the domain service type name simply telling it, yeah, this is the class that we're gonna use. So we have this catalog, which is in this namespace. Ignore the fact that it's called dynamic data project. This is a artifact of the fact that this was not a real uh, project template. So uh, catalog. And the second piece of information is to tell it what kind of entities it's going to work with, and more specifically, what select method is going to use. So I'll tell it, select method equal get products. And uh, one key point is that if you're wondering why can't I just tell it it's products and why do you have to tell it the method, uh, the answer is simply that you could have multiple methods to get products, get products sorted by this and, and so on. So let's try to go ahead and run this. Okay, and we get your basic standard view. So, so far everything looks the same as it would if you were to use uh, link data source directly. And uh, actually one more thing I'll do is I'll enable editing on the grid view, auto generate edit button equal true. And I'll just perform a, a, a simple edit just to show that. So, a few questions you may have here is, I told it what select method to use. I did not tell it what update method to use. How did it know which one? And that's simply signature based. Uh, whereas you can have multiple select methods for the other three, the cut method, create, update, delete, you can only have one. And by telling it the select method, it basically knew that I'm dealing with the product and therefore that this was the method to use. So now let's start looking at what are the benefits of using this approach versus going straight to link to SQL via a link to SQL data source or entity framework. I'm referring to one versus the other. The model is essentially equivalent. And really the answer comes down to how much control you have over your data. Here, 
the, the really the most important point about this class is that any data access that's going to happen is going to go through your method. The data source itself has no ability to get or set data of any form without you telling it to do it. So a quick way to demonstrate this is here, uh, let's tell it to further filter the products list. Uh, for instance, here we have this reorder level, which sometimes is zero. Let's eliminate those. I can just say dot where product, we are the level greater than zero. Well, refresh, and looking at this column here, the, all the zeros are gone. So I'm certainly not saying that you could not do that with linked data source, but in order to do it, you would have had to write code which in a place where you would ideally not want to, which is the page itself. Here we're keeping that logic entirely out of the page. So I'll go and remove this logic here. And now let's look at what can we do with update method. Well, we can do pretty much anything we want. We, let's say we want to add something to the product name as it's being edited. I can say product name plus equal, let's just put an exclamation mark to, uh, to demonstrate this. And as I edit this item again, update, and you get this. So nothing spectacular, but again, much easier to do and much cleaner than it would otherwise be. Um, what else can we do? Let's say, uh, in addition to wanting to modify the data, you may want to complain that uh, something is wrong with the update. So I can do this, let's remove this line and so th really the, the key things to look at is that even though the pattern of having this CRUD method is standard to the domain service, you will always use those when you have a domain service, what you write inside of your method is completely agnostic. It's, it's based on what specific technology you're using. In this case, we're using uh, entity framework, therefore context, this is our link to SQL uh, context. I'm sorry, our entity framework context, and everything you write in there is uh, specific to, the, to that. If we're using link to SQL, this would look different. It wouldn't be attached as modified. It'd be, I forget what it's called. But, and if you use a yet completely different, uh, even non-Microsoft DAL, you would just write whatever is the right line of code that will perform this update. So now let, let's see uh, how we can deal with a situation where the product has some fields that we don't like. Let's just say if we order level equal say 17, we'll throw a validation exception. And let's see, bad, we order, whatever. Okay. And now, as I try to perform an edit and set we order level to 17, it's going to blow up. So initially it doesn't look pretty because it, there's nothing to handle that exception. But going back to the page, we have this new type of validator. I assume most of you are familiar with ASP.NET validators. Uh, we have this new validator that we call the domain validator. And I tell it to validate control to validate equal the grid view. 